Hello everyone, I welcome you all on Baizu's exam prep YouTube platform. I hope you are enjoying. So in today's learn with fun session, I am going to show you alternator, three phase alternator. And I am not going to show you how the alternator works, but I am going to show you what are those, what are, what, are the, what are the parts and what are the connection of the three phase alternator. Maybe in some other video, I will show you how it works and I will connect the supply and uh, I will connect the prime mover and then take the output from the alternator and I will control the output in some other video but in today's video we will just analyze the parts of the alternator how it is connected and what is the function of a specific part okay so now uh, here we have one alternator you can see here and uh, let me explain what is this uh, what is this system so you can see that this is a motor this is a single phase induction motor and it, it will act like a prime mover. Now the rating of this motor is 2 HP, 1.5 kW, kilo watt. So it means 2, 2 HP, it's a very small motor. Why I have connected so, so small motor? Because actually uh, this, this alternator is for experimental purpose. So I don't require that much high power for the alternator. That's why I have connected a small motor here. So it will act like a prime mover. It will rotate this rotor and from here I can take the output from the alternator. So you can see that the output is a four wire output. It means it's a star connected system. So three phase wire and one neutral. Okay, this is the output point. Now how it will give you the output? Because what you are doing is you are actually rotating the rotor part. Now you can see inside this, this is the rotor part. This is the rotor part. In this rotor, you have coils. Okay, in this rotor you have coils. Let me show you properly. Okay, so you can see that uh, this is a closed loop. Okay, and uh, uh, let me let me show you this. Okay, so this is the rotor. You can see that, and here these are the stator part. It's a permanent pole. Okay, and uh, there is one more pole. This this pole. Okay, so there are two pole on this side and two pole on the other side. So actually there are four poles here in this alternator. There are four poles, and. Uh, so when I will rotate it, when I will rotate it, what will happen? In the rotor, the coils will rotate, and the coils are rotating in the in the permanent pole between the per, uh, uh, between the permanent pole. The, if the coil rotates, what will happen? It will induce some voltage. That induced voltage will be available at these points. The induced voltage will be available at these points. Now, the question is, how to supply the permanent pole? To make the permanent pole. We need DC supply because it's not the permanent magnet we have connected. Actually, we have uh, you can say uh, we have to supply DC DC current to the to the poles so that permanent magnet can be generated. So to, for that, I have connected an, a bridge rectifier. You can see that this is the bridge rectifier. Okay, in this bridge rectifier, these points are the supply points, three points, and these two points are the output point. One is red, one is black, it means one is positive point, one is negative point, okay? So these two points are connected to the DC pole, uh, to, the, to the permanent poles, okay? So I have connected these output of the rectifier to the field supply, okay? Field supply means uh, the supply which is going to the, uh, to the poles, stator poles. The poles are on the stator in this particular alternator. But it is not necessary that every time you connect the poles on the stator, permanent poles on the stator, it may be possible. I mean, you can you can connect, uh, you can make the alternator in which the the DC poles or the uh, the poles uh, the field supply is on the on the on the rotor, and uh, uh, three phase output is available at the stator. But in this particular question, in this particular uh, system or in this particular alternator, you can say that uh, rotor has three phase supply and stator has DC supply. So I have connected the output of the rectifier to the DC supply. I mean uh, the DC which is provided to the field coils. Okay. Now if you look at this, the DC requirement of the DC level is uh, 24 volt. And from here you will get the output voltage which is large enough, 230 volt per phase. Okay. So what I did is I connected a transformer. This is the transformer, three phase transformer. And you can see the same out same point where I am taking the output. The same terminal are connected to the input of this transformer, three phase transformer, and this three phase transformer is step uh, step down uh, will step down the voltage. It will step down the voltage, and it will provide the input to the rectifier. 
so uh, it will step down to 24 volt level approximately 24 volt okay or maybe 48 volt i'm not aware of that i have not checked it but it will be uh, either 24 or 48 volt so it has reduced the voltage at this level so the output voltage will get dc level of 48 volt let's say and that 48 volt is going to the dc supply okay dc field coils okay i hope you understood how this transformer is working okay why i have connected this transformer because we we don't want to rectify the direct supply we don't want to direct supply we don't want to connect this rectifier to the direct supply because the level of the supply voltage is very high that's why we have to reduce it and then we have to put a rectifier here and the output of the rectifier is connected to the dc poles okay now the, the important thing is in at starting when it start rotating at starting there is no supply available here because there is no induced voltage if there is no induced voltage there is no supply available at this point so the voltage will get induced only because of the residual flux because some flux is 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 retained in the in the, in the stator poles because of that residual flux very little voltage will get induced it may be 5 volt or 10 volt the 10 volt will get induced and the 10 volt is supplied to this rectifier after step down okay and the rectifier will make it a dc voltage and it will again supply to the field coils now it's a regenerative action and what is that regenerative action and because of the residual flux some voltage get induced because of that induced voltage the rectifier will supply some dc uh, dc supply to the to the field coils because of the dc supply the strength of the field pole will increase it means the flux per pole will get increased if the flux per pole is increasing it means the induced voltage will also increase so eventually what will happen the, the the induced voltage will start increasing if the induced voltage is increasing again the rectifier output will also increase it means the dc supply to the field coil will also increase it will strengthen the, the flux per pole if the flux per pole is increasing again the induced voltage will further increase it means it's a regenerative action it's a positive feedback it's a regenerative action and ultimately there will be a stable point where the increment of the voltage will stop and ultimately uh, the alternator will provide that stable voltage i hope you understood how the field coils will work now let's say you want to control the voltage and the frequency of the output output voltage and output voltage magnitude and frequency you want to control now how to control the voltage level there are there are two methods i mean there can be multiple methods but, uh, but i will discuss only two methods here because i can perform uh, those methods in some upcoming videos one method is you can control the speed of this prime work if the speed of this prime work get reduced or get increased you can change the level of the voltage voltage level will get increased or decreased but the problem is if you're changing the prime work speed the frequency of the output will also get changed okay this is the main problem with the, with the prime work speed here in this particular situation because it's an isolated alternator so in this alternator if you are changing the prime work speed frequency of the output voltage will also get changed and the amplitude of the voltage will also get changed okay so there are some applications where the frequency is not required let's say you are uh, supplying uh, some some bulb some uh, some filament bulb okay so in, in those filament bulb you don't require frequency frequency can be 50 hertz or 20 hertz or 30 hertz uh, the main thing is voltage level there you can change the speed there you can change the speed and the voltage level can be controlled so this is the one method the second method is in place of these rectifiers you can connect thyristors with the help of firing angle of the thyristors you can control the dc output voltage the level of the dc output voltage if the dc output voltage level is changed then the field supply will get changed you can control the flux per pole if the flux per pole can be reduced or increased then also the voltage level get reduced or increased without changing the frequency so this is the second method then you can connect thyristor in place of bridge rectifier i mean in, in place of diodes you can connect thyristor there is one more method because thyristors are costly so what you can do is at the output terminal you can see that this is positive point this is negative point of the, of the bridge rectifier what you can do is you can connect a rheostat in series with that that's it. This is the positive terminal. This is the negative terminal. So, in series with the positive terminal, you can connect a rheostat, and if you can control the the resistance of the rheostat, you can control the current supply to the field coils. 
again you can control the flux per pole and if the flux per pole can be controlled then you can control the output voltage so this way you can control the output voltage level okay i hope you you understood all these concepts and i hope you enjoyed this video in the next video maybe some upcoming video not uh, not the, the next one because the next one i i want to perform some other experiment next to next video i will try to turn it on i will try to rotate this uh, prime mover with the help of uh, single phase supply and i will try to take output from this alternate okay i'll try to take the output from this alternate and uh, i hope uh, you will you will enjoy this uh, the upcoming video also so don't forget to sub subscribe our channel and please share this video to your friends and uh, that's all for today session guys thank you and take care bye